Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Samuel Myung, and today I will be covering the topic of genetic mapping with you. So for our genetic mapping example, we are going to be using bears as our subject animal. As you can see, brown coat is dominant to black coat, long claw is dominant to short claw, and round ear is dominant to pointy ear. And for our example, the coefficient of coincidence is 0.59. As you can see, we have a homozygous dominant parent who has a brown coat, long claws, and round ears, and we also have a homozygous recessive parent who has a black coat, short claws, and pointy ears. These two bears mate with each other and produce our F1 heterozygous bear cub. This bear cub is a heterozygous individual that has a phenotype of a brown coat, long claws, and round ears. First, we have our double crossover events. As you can see, there are two possible gamete types because there are two possible double crossover events. Following the blue arrows, we can see our first gamete type is big A, little b, big C. Following the red arrows, we can see our second gamete type is little a, big b, little c. Now let's look at the map. As you can see, the distance between coat color and claw length is 9 centimorgans. The distance between claw length and ear shape is 5 centimorgans. To find our DCO probability, we will multiply our 9 centimorgans by our 5 centimorgans, and then multiply that to our coefficient of coincidence, which is 0 0.59. We get a value of 0 0.002655. Now since there are two possible double crossover events, we must multiply our 0 0.002655 value by one half to get the correct probability for each event. We end up with 0 0.0013275. This means the probability of getting the gamete type big A, little b, big C through a double crossover event is 0.13275%. Next, we have our single crossover one events. As you can see, there are two possible gamete types because there are two possible single crossover one events. Following the blue arrows, we can see our first gamete type is big A, little b, little c. Following the red arrows, we can see our second gamete type is little a, big b, big c. Now let's look at the math. To find our SC1 probability, we subtract our 9 centimorgans by the DCO value we found earlier, which was 0 0.002655. We get a value of 0 0.087345. Now, since there are two possible single crossover one events, we must multiply our 0 0.087345 value by one half to get the correct probability for each event. We end up with 0 0.04367.25. This means the probability of getting the gamete type big A, little b, little c, through a single crossover one event is 4.36725%. Next, we have our single crossover two events. As you can see, there are two possible gamete types because there are two possible single crossover two events. Following the blue arrows, we can see our first gamete type is big A, big b, little c. Following the red arrows, we can see our second gamete type is little a, little b, big c. Finally, we have our no crossover events. As you can see, there are two possible gamete types because there are two possible no crossover events. Following the blue arrows, we can see our first gamete type is big A, big B, big C. Following the red arrows, we can see our second gamete type is little A, little B, little C.